anyway, we're not going to. We're just going to keep it, keep keep growing it as, um, as as fast as we can to make sure people can go wh wherever they want, whenever they want, uh, with convenience. Uh, keep upgrading the capability of the supercharger uh, system so it can charge things faster. Um, we're going to start adding amenities to the supercharger stations, so the really big stations. We'll start adding amenities um, and just make it so that you. When you do a long distance trip in a Tesla, you love the experience. Um, that, that's the overarching goal. And then, and then autopilot. Um, it, it's definitely been a tough, um, tough slog transitioning from the mobile vision chip to Tesla's internal vision system. Uh, but I think we're, we're almost uh, there in terms of exceeding the ability of the hardware one cars. So the hardware two cars have all of the hardware necessary for full autonomy, so the eight cameras, 12 of the most advanced uh, ultrasonic sonar sensors, uh, a radar, a very good uh, GPS, and an IMU, um, and uh, everything necessary to go full autonomy. It's really about up, um, upgrading the software over time. So I think with the next release of software, which is maybe as soon as next week, um, we will finally exceed um, the experience of the hardware one cars, and then it's going to advance very rapidly from there. And our, our goal remains being able to drive autonomously from a parking lot um, in California to a parking lot in New York um, without touching a control at any point along the, along the way. So in the, the, the Gigafactory, uh, is uh, going going quite well. Um, that that's the I think the latest picture of, of the status. Obviously, the um, ultimate footprint will be quite a bit bigger than than what you see even there. Um, and and it's we believe it'll be within a few years have the capacity a capacity equal to all other lithium-ion battery factories in the world combined in one building. So you've had every out of everything in the U.S., China, Europe. And, every, and Korea, everywhere else, this one factory will output more than all of them combined. Um, so it's really this, the, the sheer scale of this is difficult to appreciate unless you're there in person. Uh, it is just staggeringly enormous. Um, that allows us to achieve high economies of scale, so that uh, with high, with uh, very high production rates, um, um, we're maximizing economies of scale, enabling us to get the lowest cost per kilowatt hour in the world. Um, a lot, but at the same time, have the most advanced batteries. So the combination of the, 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 the best technology um, at the lowest cost, I think, is a, 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 just a very, uh, I mean, obviously, a great position to be in. Um, and, and I think it's, it's a, a fundamental um, a part of Tesla's strategy. There, there's just no one else who's a, attempting anything, as far as we know, even attempting anything on, on, on the scale. And so I think that puts us in a very, very strong competitive position um, to sustain the growth of the company uh, for, for several years to come. And, and then uh, over time, there will be uh, several gigafactories. I think eventually, you know, 10, 10 or 12, maybe 20, I don't know, a lot. Um, so um, it's, it's like a giant machine. So we'll keep refining this and productizing it, and then, and then uh, building gigafactories around the world. An uh, important thing that we're um, making progress on is factory safety. Uh, so, uh, that, that's, so far this year, uh, Tesla is 32% below the uh, auto, uh, automotive industry uh, injury rate. Uh, and that, that trend is better and better with each passing month. So I, I think we're on track to be uh, less than half the entry rate of the automotive industry and by far better than any other U.S. factory, um, which I think is something um, that's extremely important. And then we've got some future products. Uh, so the semi-truck we're going to unveil at the end of September. And I think that's, that's very exciting. A lot of people don't think you can do um, a heavy-duty, long-range truck uh, that's electric, but we are confident that this, is, this can be done. 
So we'll um, be showing off a, a working prototype uh, at, end of, at, you know, not too long from now, the end of September. And uh, we, we've shown it to a number of the uh, organizations that buy heavy-duty trucking, and they all love it. They just want to know how, how many can they buy and how soon. It's like, like cool. And, and we're, we're involving them in, in thank you. And we're, and we're getting them closely involved in the design process. So the, the biggest customers of the, the heavy-duty uh, Tesla Semi are helping ensure that it, is, that it is specified to their needs. So it's, it's not a mystery. They already know that it's going to meet their needs because they help d decide what the, they, they, they've told us what those needs are. <laughs> so it's, it's going to really just be a question of, of scaling uh, volume to um, make as many as, as as we can. And then Model Y, um, I'm really excited about Model Y. It, it's, you know, there's been some criticism like we should sort of do it derived from the Model 3 platform, but I think actually we made a mistake in trying to derive the Model X from the Model S platform. Um, it would have been better to just design, design an SUV the way an SUV should be designed, design a sedan the way a sedan should be de designed. Otherwise, you're just trying to shoehorn something in that, that doesn't make sense. Um, also, there are a number of, I think, really major manufacturing improvements that can be done um, that allow us to build a car in, in a way that a car has never been built before. Um, it, the, the, the capital expenditures, I think, would be substantially less. I'm confident that we could drop the CapEx by a factor of two between Model 3 and Model Y, which I think is a really big deal, and accelerate uh, its readiness despite the new technologies. Um, so we're aiming for that uh, you know, to, to hit the roads in, in, in 2019 approximately. Um, and probably the demand for the Model Y will exceed the, the demand for the Model 3. So. Um, and there's a few other things I haven't mentioned here. I've got to, you know. <laughs> you, <laughs> I just like really recommend showing up for the semi truck uh, unveiling. Maybe there's a little more than we're saying here. So maybe. <laughs> maybe. Could be. Who knows? Uh, Model 3 configurator, so we expect that a configurator to go live towards the end of uh, next month when we deliver the first production Model 3. So yeah, we're definitely on track to deliver the first production Model 3 next month. That's going to be real exciting. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll have the configurator go live uh, right at that point. Now I should say that the, we've, we've kept the, con the initial configurations for Model 3 very simple. This is critical to achieving uh, a rapid production ramp. Big mistake we made with the, the X, uh, which is primarily it's my responsibility, way too much complexity right at the beginning. That was, that was very foolish. Um, so, you know, when you think of it like going back to the launch of the Model S, Model S only had one configuration at, at, at start of production. Um, and now it had one configuration because that's all we could do, <laughs> not because we were really clever. <laughs> And, and then <laughs> Model X of uh, hubris extraordinaire, we, uh, we actually, we, we, we added, I mean, it, it is like a Fabergé egg of cause. I think it's, a, it's really an amazing product, but it's, it has way too many cool things in it that, that should have really been rolled in with version two, version three. That would have been the sensible way to do it. Um, we, got, we got overconfident and um, created something great that probably will never be made again, and, and perhaps should not be. <laughs> um, but it is an amazing car, and as we keep refining the software in the Model X, it's just going to get better and better. Um, so initially, the Model 3 configurators, it's kind of going to be like, what color do you want, and what size wheels do you want? That's basically going to be the configurator. <laughs> and then, and then we'll, we'll show what other, what, what other versions are coming later, um, as soon as we, we, we get configuration one right, 
um, but they, and, and with a timeline associated with, with each configuration. Uh, for example, we were going to start off with dual motor, but, but, but that's like, wait a second, we just doubled the probability of something going wrong if we get two motors, because they, they're two different motor architectures. Um, one motor is optimized for, for uh, highway travel, and one's optimized for stop and go traffic, which is great for maximizing your, uh, your, your mileage in city and maximizing your highway, your, your mileage on, on freeway, and, and having incredible acceleration, but it's too, it's too much complexity right off the bat, so it'll just be single motor to begin with, and then we'll have the dual motor config. If we're lucky, to end of this year, more likely early next. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the configurator, because you only have to decide like what color do you want and what size wheels. That's basically it for initial production. Uh, in terms of how many factories are in the works, um, we're really giving serious consideration to three, three factory locations right now, but we're going to try to hold our powder dry, keep the powder dry until we're confident of, uh, of the locations and the timing. Um, but uh, like I said, ultimately, probably there's at least 10 of these worldwide, and maybe, maybe as much as 20. Uh, how long of a wait will it be for customers wanting a Model 3 and haven't placed a 1K deposit? This will be a long wait. Um, <laughs> um, there's a lot of people that have ordered the car. I'm, I'm guessing if, if you put a deposit down on Model 3 now, it's probably, well, it's going to be over a year, end of next year before you get it, something like that. Um, on the other hand, we, 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 there are more and more deposits every week, so if you want it, then definitely put down the deposit. <laughs> the line isn't getting shorter. <laughs> um, we're doing our best to do this ramp, but we've got to do the ramp right. We've got to make sure the quality is good, the safety is good, um, and uh, it, it's crazy hard to make cars. I, I, I'll tell you, this is, there's like 10,000 unique items and, and it will move as fast as the slowest item. So, and, and then e even beyond the stuff that's internal to Tesla, you say, like, okay, who's the least lucky supplier we have out there? Um, or or what's a, what supplier cares the least? Or whatever the case may be. And then you look at our supply chain, and it's like, wow, our supply chain is like covering Earth. So like, what are the odds that there's going to be some portions of your events somewhere on Earth? Like, pretty high. Um, so uh, you know, one of the things I want to do with Model Y is also just um, simplify the supply chain so that we're not inheriting force majeure risk from Earth. Because Earth is big, and if something, wrong, if something bad happens on Earth at any given point in time. So we, we must stop inheriting force majeure risk from, from all of Earth. You can, you, can help, you can solve this by buffering parts, but if, if the parts aren't made to begin with, you can't buffer them. So, yeah. Um, are there plans place to offer battery upgrades? Um, yeah, um, so we, we do offer that um, already. I wouldn't recommend doing a battery upgrade until the, ba the, the existing battery that you have has a fair bit of life on it. Um, and there are some limitations because there can be a, a pretty big weight difference between the lightest battery pack and the heaviest. So we, we can't go from lightest to heaviest. Um, but the, we, we, can, we definitely uh, can upgrade battery packs really in, in every car, um, and we will uh, we will offer that and make that um, easier um, with, with each passing year. But if somebody's got a new battery pack, it's it's not going to make financial sense to upgrade the, just the battery pack. Um, better to sell the car they got that that you've got and 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 then and then buy a different one, either new or used. Um, and and I should mention we're we're gonna. Um, um, really give more prominence to uh, used Teslas on our website. Uh, but we're not going to call them pre-owned. That is like a bogus name. Um, <laughs> that's so bogus. That's BS. It's used. Okay, everyone knows that. <laughs> who, who are we fooling here? <laughs> um, so the used Tesla section of the website is, um, is, is going to get a lot more attention. Um, and um, 
you know, particularly if, if the car is four years old and it's got a lot of mileage, um, you could buy a Model S 